This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and offer code CFN. It's three letters, really. I mean, it's so easy. Just CFN. It's not hard. No, no. Come on. Three letters. All right, let's go. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Graham Elwood. Welcome to episode 201. Wow. We, we made it past 200. We did. We've, we've made it past that 200. That was a really special episode, 200. It was. It was. Yeah, it was my really dad. fun having your dad here. It was amazing. Listen mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Professor Elwood mm-hmm. <laughs> talk about D- Discuss movies and, and theater. And I, I'm remiss. We should have had him talk more in German. Because he's fluent in German, so we should have had him. All right, next time for the 400th episode. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, he's 78. Um, <laughs> so, uh, All right, 300. Yeah, 300, 300, 250. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thanks, guys. Um, I want to thank uh, everyone that came out to see me in uh, Milwaukee. Last weekend, that was a lot of fun at the Comedy Cafe, and um, everyone who came to the uh, All Things Comedy Show at Largo, that was fun. Yeah, that was great. Good business. Um, all right, well, let's. Uh, what other stuff do we need to discuss? Well, we do want to talk about uh, Squarespace. As you know, they're doing a, uh, a really nice uh, promotion with us mm-hmm. through the next couple of um, months. <laughs> And um, it's an amazing platform. It's like everyone kind of needs a website, whether mm-hmm. you're selling something or it's a hobby or, or whatever. It's always nice to have a website, and Squarespace makes it easy to put together. And what you can do is you can um, like I moved. I'm Grandmelo.com is now a Squarespace. Yeah, I yeah. It over. It's very and easy. it's a lot of um, it's a lot of just kind of pieces already made for you. It's like mm-hmm. putting together basically a puzzle for your website in a good way. And uh, there's a lot of drag and drop too, right? Mm-hmm. It's very simple, and they've they've really started to uh, make it um, easy for like artists and entertainers. And uh, but what about support, Graham? They <laughs> they have great support, Chris. <laughs> they have twenty four seven support mm-hmm. uh, with people here in America, what, which is what? which is convenient. Yes, it is odd to talk to somebody that that knows what. So you're they saying. can talk good English. They can talk, speak very good English, Chris. Excellent. Um, so, but, but, but you know, but is it spe- is it hours? I mean, is it is it like limited hours or is it twenty four? It's twenty four seven, like I just said. So, maybe if you'd listen more, <laughs> I don't uh, know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> so this is kind of a recurring problem yeah. that we're having. Um, All right. Yeah, it's twenty. It's twenty four seven customer support. Okay, so stamps dot com. Got yeah. it. No, 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 no what? That's not no, real. you said oh. another company. Oh, jeez. All right. So square middle. Squarespace. Squarespace.com and go to coupon code uh, CFN. Now, the other thing I want to talk about, too, is um, we have a lot of filmmakers that put their mm-hmm. make their sites on uh, Squarespace, and we want to start profiling some, some of them. And one of the ones I wanted to profile today is a short film written and directed by Wolfgang uh, Bodison. And it's called thelongweightfilm.com is the, is the website, and obviously the, the movie is The Long Wait. Now, uh, I went to the site, and I actually I watched the trailer for the short film, and it's about, after 20 years of silence, a desperate woman seeks revenge against the man who ruined her life. Now, the backstory to this short film is really interesting. The filmmaker, uh, Wolfgang, and uh, the lead actress, um, they each suffer tragedy in their lives. Their uh, fathers were killed in um, mm-hmm. automobile accidents. So this is uh, the story of how someone actually confronts the person that killed their father in a automobile accident and what kind of happens that's what the short film is about wow so so you definitely it's a love to... story yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's light i think watch it on yeah. valentine's day yeah maybe. yeah with someone you uh you love or um or not or perhaps. maybe there's yeah. a blood feud yeah you really yeah. want to settle <laughs> um so check that out that's the it's a squarespace website this is the squarespace filmmaker profile 
and the long wait film dot com. Yeah, it's one of the things we want to do, guys. We don't want to just sit here and and, tell and read you, ad and copy. read ad copy. We want you guys to we want to make it. We want to show you about. Wow, these are horrible sentences. It's yes. not like we've, we've done two hundred episodes. It's yeah. our first one. Um, we want you to we find out. We want to make good show. We, you we, help. <laughs> this is awful. We need a coupon code for these sentences. You need a coupon code for your mouth. Yeah, my yeah. mouth is really stupid. Is there drag and drop for my mouth? Is there twenty four seven customer support for my mouth in this country? Yeah. Um, uh, yes, we want to show you uh, websites not just to promote Squarespace, but to show you cool. Films that are out there. Yes, and and then if anyone and how has, filmmakers are using Squarespace, yeah. and how if you have uh, a movie or something, because I know a lot of you are filmmakers, this is a good way to do it. But also check out this movie. Is yeah. this the whole show? This is, is, a, <laughs> this is, a, this is nonstop. Um, so uh, all right, let's. We should probably maybe introduce our guest. Let's introduce our guest. All right, let's do it. Very very talented. I forgot her name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna. We have. She's only been on the show like ten times. She is our twenty four seven customer support, <laughs> and <laughs> I was gonna do an accent, but then yeah. you know, it's just been offensive. Um, Hello, well, I, I don't even know what that is. Wow, well, I that, know what part of the valley. I do is voices. That? Um, just one of my yeah. gifts. <laughs> gifts. We are so happy to have her uh, back in the nerd cave. Um, TV personality mm. and um, author. author, comedian. Mm-hmm. Blogger and uh, and mom and mom, ladies and gentlemen, Stephanie Wilder Taylor. Hello, uh, you know what I was just remembering was that before I think I've been doing Lynette's podcast. Well, my uh, for crying out loud for years now. Yes, and the right before. I announced that I was doing that or that I was the co-host. I said it here. Yes. And people in the comments went onto the comments over there and we they're like, we the figured out who is. the host yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> that was like three years ago. Yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Really? I know. It just seems like, oh man. No, we've been doing time this for flies. a while. I know. It seems like it was just like last year. That was three years ago. I know. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So, uh, we're so happy. I'm so happy to be back. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We I are love happy this. Happy. This is, I laugh so hard when I do this podcast. <laughs> so, I mean. Probably today that won't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah today, right. Today's right. Today's so let's see what happens today. Said it. All right. Well, they crossed 200 episodes <laughs> yeah. and it just went downhill from there. <laughs> Everything sucked. So normally I have a really good time. Let's see what happens today. <laughs> today's going to probably tank. <laughs> um, so how's your show going? It's going fantastic. Tell our fans what the show is. Uh, so it's called Parental Discretion mm-hmm. and it's on Nick Jr., but at night, Nick Jr. magically turns into Nick Mom, oh. and it shows for moms. But it's actually just comedy shows. The, in the same way that we get a lot of single males that listen to For Crying Out Loud that are obviously perverts, uh, in that same way... <laughs> People that uh, people that aren't don't even have kids would probably enjoy parental discretion. So it's late, got a lot of like subtle comedy, so funny Nick bits. Jr. At night is for yeah. creeps. That's what you're saying. That's yes. what I'm exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. That's on the press. They release, will never right? listen to this, so we don't have to worry. Honestly, <laughs> I do funny shit. Like I go out and I played NFL football no. with uh, women. Yeah, with a team called the California Quake. They're not actually NFL, but they play by NFL rules. It's an mm. all-female team and I they fully tackle. I went and played with the team. I went and learned how to sing opera and of course made fun of it the whole time. That's great. Yeah. And what time is it on? It's on Friday nights at 10 p.m. Oh, cool. Yeah. So what is the like the production schedule on that show? Well, uh, it's all year long, except for the fact that we did all 20 episodes in seven days. Oh, my yeah. God. Really? So it's all done. Yeah. Wow. So you just. So that's a really aggressive shooting schedule. Yeah. I, we did three shows a night, Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday. We were done. Wow. wow. Yeah. 20 episodes. And what is the, like the show. For anyone who's never seen it, what is the like format of the show, and how does it? So we do a monologue up front, which what is like a little bit we... of stand up. Uh, I mean, the writers and I, you oh. know, there's a monologue. I do a monologue, uh, and then I show either a video of either something funny that I went and did, like the football thing, or um, I went and drove a race car. I, you know, so funny jokes that kind of have some mom stuff in them, but are just kind of funny. And then we make fun of old videos. Then we come back and it, I like sit down with some videos? other moms, like, like uh, old commercials or uh, old uh, training films and mm-hmm. you, that kind of fun stuff that you find that people have on their Facebook page. Right, right, right. right. We do a little segment with that. We make fun of it. 
And then we sit down with a couple other moms, some, some comics, and we talk about motherhood. And then, uh, we usually have like a green screen character. Like I'll talk to a visiting person like teen babysitter. We have funny, funny mm-hmm. recurring right. characters, uh, stay at home dad we had. Uh, and then, um, then we just end the show, you know? At that point, <laughs> we, what more is there to do, really? It's a half hour show? Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Oh, and you've cool. been doing it for how long? This is our second season. We've, I think we're three episodes into the new season. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, great. So there's still, even if you didn't, you can catch it online too. Oh, go to nickmom.com. There you go. go under their TV thing and, and download some episodes. Awesome. Of mm-hmm. parental discretion. Parental discretion. Also yeah. Then a there's Facebook no. Fan page. Yes, they do. Perfect. They do. Oh, Yes, they do. Promotional. Uh, <laughs> what is that? You know what I mean? Like, what does that do? Companies are so obsessed with how many likes the Facebook page has, but what does it actually do? Well, I don't know. I think it, you know, we have Comedy Film Nerds has one, the podcast festival. Hey, has I'm one. all about it. I want more Facebook likes. Trust well, me. Think- I'm just saying when you think about it, though, like it only helps Facebook. We can't <laughs> advertise on it, right? Right. Well, I. But think it becomes this right. thing to show like how popular you are. So now we have to go around going, please like our Facebook page. But it's not like we ever make need, any. Yeah, you need like a lot of. We need to prove that people the, are. I think being, does, are well, engaged. Yeah. Well, I think also it, it, you have when people like that, then you sort of have direct access to people that say that they to let them know when your show is on. And right. All that you can stuff. use it for updates and like we use the comedy film nerd one for all kinds of different movie trivia and updates i i use my own basically to to promote uh live shows and i don't know but don't you have so at a certain point don't you just feel like i gotta rein this shit in i got there's parental discretion the show page there's stephanie wilder taylor the right. fan page there's right. stephanie wilder taylor my facebook page there's nickmom.com that you can yeah, yeah. like on Facebook. Consolidation's like, pretty oh, good. I, I mean, because you know, then there's then for you crying these, out loud. And you get barraged. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's yeah. a lot. And I wonder too with Facebook. I mean, obviously we all use it, but I, you know, I wonder like teenage kids are stop uh, stopping with using it. They're not like it's because their parents are on it. Are they back to fu- f- uh, MySpace? <laughs> That'd be yeah. funny if they went back to MySpace. <laughs> Because I think that's what's Come full circle. Like, mm-hmm. Oh man, my my parents are checking out my Facebook posts and you know right. crawling up my ass about it. And also, so it's no cool, not cool anymore. It's yeah. becoming that. And because Facebook is so about advertising, advertising, it's it's overwhelming for some people. And also, you know, they do they do do things that are kind of asinine. Like I've got uh, you know ten thousand likes on my personal Graham Elwood comedy. Facebook wow, page. that's great, right? Yeah, I've got like 780. <laughs> <laughs> so when I post something, it'll only go to a certain number of people and then I have to pay to post it to more people. It's right. Like, Fuck so off. The, even though it's only like $5 to boost it. Right. But here's the problem. What, if you do that, it, it comes up as, it says sponsored. Yeah. So I feel like people then just go, oh, oh it's, it's ad. advertising. Yeah. Then they immediately get rid of it. And it's like, wait, so I paid for people to now mm-hmm. just be annoyed. Yeah, I know, and it's. Anno- yeah, I could do it, that for free. And it's, right. it's, it's, it's that's the <laughs> thing that they're. they're I'm so losing. good at annoying people. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're if they're not, they're and especially us as like entertainers, right? They're benefiting from all of our content, right? You know, like all the jokes we write on Twitter, like right. Twitter is benefiting from that. Exactly, I mean, we kind of are in the sense. I mean, specifically to stand up comics, like the more Twitter followers you have, it does translate. Yeah, but to f- ticket sales on the road. True, mm-hmm. but for every hundred jokes uh, that you write on Twitter, do you get stock options? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You get a, you get a piece a little, of Twitter. I'm, I'm beginning <laughs> to be a little tired of of like. You know, Twitter and Facebook were all built on our backs, <laughs> and it's sort yeah. of like, wh- okay, are we getting like? Well, it's a platform. Of- it is. Yeah, and that's really what it is. It's uh, you know, it's like iTunes is making a fortune, but they don't make any content. Yeah, I know. You know, it's 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 a delivery platform, and that's where the so, genius money is. Really, at least they iTunes should pay we're us. A taste. At the- least we're getting a taste on iTunes. You know what right. I mean? At least I get checks every quarter from iTunes for mm-hmm. my albums and stuff. Right. But if you make a game. And it's on iTunes. Um, did iTunes help you make that game? It's I a know. third. It's you know, it's the whole, it's the whole thing of like, well, movie distributors. It's like I know they're getting a third. And yeah. It's like, yeah. You you wonder really? if these if if ten percent at best. Yeah. If these um these percentages are are finally becoming under scrutiny. I'm like, well, wait. All I'm doing is putting it in your store. Is that worth a third? 
And no. so it's but really when, interesting. But then think about a traditional, uh, cause I've been thinking about this a lot because I'm, I'm probably going to be putting out an ebook, uh, like a little, like a little ebook about being 40. Like maybe like a Kindle single or something like. But not even a Kindle single because my friend and I are going to do it. We think we just want to sell it for 99 cents. Mm -hmm. Just a fun, like a taste of this book that we want to do about called uh, Fuck It, I'm 40. Mm -hmm. And it's just a very comedic out there book about being 40. So we wrote the proposal. We're having trouble selling it. So we thought maybe we should just Just put out. Put it out. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't know if we want to write the whole oh, the book whole thing. I got because, you. Okay. you know, so we were thinking about, but anyway, if you put something out, here's the way it breaks down. I'm sure you know this. If you put it out for 99 cents, you can only, you only get 35%. So they get 70 or 65%. Right. I'm not good at math. Yeah. But they get, that's a they big get, they, percentage for what say you're saying, putting it in more. their store. They get more. Right. So then if you put it out, if you have somebody put it out for you, like this book company that I'm, we're going to use, they get a percentage of that too. And you pay commission on top of that. So where's right. all the money going? You're like, well, but I came up with the content. Yeah. All you're yeah. doing is putting it up. Yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of that is changing too. And one of the things we added for comedy film nerds is the distribution of feature films for filmmakers is, you know, we are splits are, you know, 70% goes to the filmmaker or even as up to 80% if it's exclusive to us, because like why, you know, you made it. You should be getting most of the money. The creator should be getting most of the money. And we totally get and we're fine with distributors and aggregators getting a percentage, but it shouldn't be the lion's share. Yeah. It shouldn't right. be a higher one than the content creator is getting. Well, then, okay, so you can get, if you if you do a Kindle book or an ebook that you charge two ninety nine for, you get 75%. So it's but it it's a lot harder to sell... Our feeling is, look, we it, it, even though we won't be making the same money, we feel like we could sell a lot more at 99 cents. Mm-hmm. I'll download a song that I only half like because it's a 99 cents. Yeah. Right. You it's know, but I'm going to think about it a lot for 2.99. Somehow the idea, it's more of an investment. So I feel like it's, I feel like people would download your thing just because you're asking them to if it's 99 cents. Mm-hmm. They'll just do it to support you. They might not even get to reading it, but they're not going to feel like it's a huge deal to get something for 99 cents. So I feel like you can build your market that way and then go to the 299. But if you start at the 299 price point, even though you get a bigger percentage, it's just harder to sell. I feel like you have to put so much more time and energy into promoting. And I just, don't you guys just get tired of promoting stuff? Well, you mean when you're asking us that in the middle of a, in the middle of a Kickstarter asking. campaign, you're yes. asking us that? Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That, that's Another exhausting. Another thing we have to promote in yeah, this episode. That's exhausting yeah. and slowly killing us. That, uh, <laughs> That Kickstarter campaign, the constant promotion. This is, that was a good entree. Yeah. yeah I, uh, well, why don't we come back to that? Let, let's <laughs> let's talk about some movies, and then in the middle, we'll, we'll talk about Kickstarter. What? On a film podcast? I know. Isn't that crazy? All right. What do you want to talk, you want to talk about? Lego movie? I want to talk about the Lego movie. Okay. Because this is a this was a really don't interesting ruin it for movie. me because my not, kids are dying. To I am see not going to ruin it for you. It's the kind of movie that when you say oh Lego movie really you know you think of like Battleship and all these horrible movies made on toys about toys and it's like it's not necessary. How are you going to make a movie on this? And I will say this movie is fantastic. It's really great. It's exactly the opposite of what you would have expected this movie to be. It's funny. It's charming. And it has a third act. I won't spoil it for anybody, but it, it gets almost postmodern and meta on like Legos and how we played with them as kids and how, you know, as adults that, you know, everyone's heard of Lego. Does it's anybody hurt their foot stepping on one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ruin anything for you. Oh, but uh, it, it's it's that movie that like you watch that movie and you go, People OK, chew on them. Yeah, as a small child. And it, it's the thing that's unique to lego too is because all the licenses they have so you've got you know superheroes in it uh-huh. i mean they don't really do a lot i mean they're still just lego figures but right. like they don't like make superman do like x-ray vision like green lantern with the and all that stuff um because he goes dude i'm just a lego yeah just i'm lego. not like a you know, just like superhero a but the one that has a lot of one that has a lot of uh, uh screen time batman yes. he does a, lego batman has a lot of screen time now but this movie, it, it's really fun. It, it's And this is proof that you could take pretty much any concept. And if you have filmmakers that care, also, you also can tell that the filmmakers are fans of Legos. And because they get into really the almost the minutiae of, of like, 
the instructions and what the Legos build and the different worlds that Lego have. And then you've got like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and you've got Lord of the Rings, you've got the superheroes and all that stuff all just kind of combined. But you also have filmmakers that really cared about making a compelling movie. So you put those two together and it's a really fun movie. Did your kids like it though? The kid, my kids loved it. Yeah. They did? Yeah, both eight and five both loved it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny that so. the, the, the two directors are uh, the guys that did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. The first one. And, and 21 Jump Street, um, which which is uh, an interesting duo. But, I, you know, I, I remember seeing, hearing that the movie was coming out, and my first reaction was the one you were you were having about, ugh, like the Battleship movie. I was like, no. And then right. I remember I, when I saw the trailer, I went, eh. This could be funny. Yeah, it could be funny. And, you know, we saw it in 3D and it's, you know, is just it worth, looking at... Is it worth 3D? No, it's not. Okay. You don't... It, but it's interesting to see, like, the Lego worlds, but you could enjoy it without the 3D. There's no question. But my uh, my kids do like the 3D because it's, it's still, like, a big kind of novelty to them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think your kids will love it. I think... Um, they can't wait. They're excited. Yeah, yeah it was really How fun. Six again? and nine. Yeah, yeah. And it's got great, like... Even the casting was good. Like, uh... Um, Will Ferrell is fantastic in it, but also like someone like Liam Neeson, you know, plays like the, 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 you know, the cop, he's really funny in it. And it's just a fun, um, family movie that like you can take your kids to, and it's one of those rare ones that you can enjoy too. Like you're not going right. to be bored out of your mind. Right. Um, it, it's not, uh, cause I have been bored by the last few kids movies very easily. It's, it's very easily <laughs> happens. Uh, they're not all Pixar. You right. know, you can't, they're not all going to be, uh, great. Um, and the, you know, the thing that was the most disturbing thing about watching this movie though, was the trailers before, cause you get to see the next planes movie that comes mm -hmm. out. I'm like, Oh my God, why? Mm -hmm. Please. No, I was just going to say, <laughs> did you see planes? So, Oh my God. That it, movie dragged. Well, did you notice the word Pixar was not on it? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. Um, so most kids like almost anything. My kids did not care for that movie. That's the. That's the. Yeah. I always ask that, like with Chris and anyone who has kids, because if your kids didn't like it, well, then it failed. Yeah, it yeah. failed miserably. It failed. Like if your kids liked it and you didn't, okay, fine. Right. But yeah. if your your small children who just like a lot, like they're they're not right. real discerning. Yeah. Like like the Crudes, like my my daughter liked it. I thought it was awful. And, yeah. Uh, but but then the movies like those dumb. Yeah, my like kids like that one too, and I did not. Yeah, yeah, horrible. But the like the movie like Free Range, like the one about the turkeys, like going back in time. Like kids, no desire to see that movie at all. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah, no, my kids didn't ha didn't want to see no, it either. No. Turkeys no. going back in time. Yeah, to stop Thanksgiving. I'm like, oh wow, that's no kid on the planet was really that compelled by that movie. Yeah. The, the last kid. movie that I loved for kids was Tangled. Oh, that was an amazing! Movie. I loved it. I was the whole time I was looking around, like, yeah. "Are you guys seeing what a great movie this see, is?" I'm laughing out loud what over about, here. Did you see Frozen? Yeah, I liked Frozen. Yeah, Frozen was really good. Did your too. kids like Frozen? My kids liked Frozen. Yeah, they they did. They really liked Frozen. They I think they all also got caught up in it afterward. The songs and they have the absolutely yeah the soundtrack. I mean, I had some problems with the <laughs> with the story. I didn't think it was like well. It could have been funnier. I thought the dialogue could have been. Oh, I, I, th I thought it was trying a I'll, little bit to be funny. And there. like Tangled yeah. had actual subtle jokes. Yes. Like it had funny jokes and characters. Yeah, it was a funnier movie. And I felt like Frozen was trying to be that. Well, Frozen. And what, not really actually having any. What, good what jokes. Frozen was was basically wicked. It was a. Yes. It was kind of a, a, a yes. musical yes. drama. But. When you have those, you also have the comic relief, and that's where it fell flat. The comic it relief did. wasn't uh, funny. And it, it did, was, yeah. Uh, so I'm like, wait. The snowman. You, you, yeah, you, you spent so much time and detail he on everything He was just kind of goofy, but he wasn't yeah, funny. Yeah, there, was, there wasn't, yeah, there, uh, that's where it kind of. that was just a voice. Yeah. A little wacky voice. It kinda, yeah. It fell a little flat there. But did you see it in 3D? Uh, no. Okay, but the cartoon at the beginning, to see that in 3D was unbelievable it's like nothing i've ever seen well but uh, that was the cartoon at the beginning yeah exactly. that's not a good like that's not a way <laughs> to go like this movie good. was amazing oh, no, I meant, if only for the cartoon oh, no, at the I beginning meant, that has nothing to do with no the movie. i meant just so, because of the 3d like, oh okay the, the, the cartoon right. beginning was made for 3d the whereas, popcorn was amazing. yeah <laughs> whereas frozen you could you don't have to see that in 3d um, if only for have you ever had milk duds and popcorn uh, at the same time because if you if you only go to see frozen for that 
Yeah. <laughs> so, peanut M and M's in your popcorn is the most amazing thing you're it, ever going to do. It, it will make yeah. the experience. It almost doesn't matter what movie you see yeah. with that, but it will you win an do award that. if you do that with while you watch that movie. You make yeah. Every Academy member eat peanut M and M's and popcorn. And they honestly, will have such an amazing and experience. Put the butter on it. So. It's the worst thing. You're watching yourself having a heart attack, but it does taste. Um, do yourself a favor. Yeah. You will enjoy the movie yeah. so much more. So. This is how you need to die. <laughs> So I have to say, um, I was really happy to see that the Lego movie was good because it was the kind of thing where it could have easily been a dumb kids movie that was clearly a money grab, you know, right. a product placement, the movie. I mean, that's what it is. Right. But the fact that they took the time and crafted a compelling story and then didn't just... I actually placed some product in that movie just because, you know... <laughs> you yeah, put your own any, yeah just, anybody can make it. It's the just, Legos. It's like going to the Lego theme park. Is it the kids you know? walking around with the sippy cups or not for Chardonnay? Just <laughs> <laughs> Look really carefully at some of the cartoon, <laughs> some of the Legos. <laughs> the Batman. So it's, crowd, is. <laughs> it's crowdsourced product placement. <laughs> 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 I was like, you know what? We're going to have a lot of eyes on this film, so might make as well happen. Yeah. invest a little bit. We should bit. make the tears on the Kickstarter campaign. If you guys want us to product place uh, in earbuds, the podcasting documentary, <laughs> donate, and we'll hold up your website. We'll come interview you for sure, man. That's not a bad idea. That's a great yeah. idea. They should let us do that, right? Well, yeah. We're going to do it for Kickstarter. If you give the to the five or $10,000 level, we'll promote your business. We'll interview you in front of your website address or whatever, man. I do not care. We got a we got a goal to hit. We got a goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll take out an ad on the Super Bowl. I mean, why not? A lot of people watch the Super Bowl. Sure. That There's no true. reason yeah. not to advertise your product. God, I bought there. I bought a lottery ticket cuz it was like 200. I I'm not I don't buy lottery tickets. I'm not mm. one of these like, "Ooh, it's up. but it was literally 250 million dollars. I'm like, "Well, if I win this, even if I get like five of six, then I'll fund the goddamn movie. Like I was literally just thinking, like if I were to win two hundred million dollars, I would just fund all of these projects that I want to do. But it, it, I didn't. Right. Do it. So we need you guys to donate on. Kickstarter. And if you put it, I mean, it's a dollar, you know, to possibly win two hundred fifteen million. I would. You know, and why I don't not? I think that would happen. I think if you won, Graham, um, uh, I would come into the garage and there'd be a note. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, and it would just say, dropping out, so long, sucker. Yeah. <laughs> I, if I was going to do that, I wouldn't take the time for the note. Yeah. <laughs> You would literally just be like, has anyone heard from Graham? Graham. Is he okay? Yeah. And then you would like... See your picture on the news about when right. you're like, oh, okay, we're never going to see Oh, you, you just see me on a yacht with a samurai sword, you know, with models or whatever. And, and it's just like, you and Doug Benson. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> never do that to you. Um, <laughs> I would give you enough money. So you could, you could I would that. get a little salary. I'd give you a little something. Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> Pay off your mortgage. Yeah. Yeah. Your kids go to good colleges and don't have to worry about anything again. Well, you know what? I'm liking the sound of this plan. I, uh, <laughs> All right, so I guess we need, I'm going to need so, more lottery uh, tickets. Yeah, I mean, at lunch, let's buy you just specifically another lottery okay, ticket I'll do because it. I got a good feeling. I hit a couple numbers. Oh, I think, you know, buddy. You know, you're really close. I'm feeling eight. Yeah. And 38. Go with an eight theme. I don't know why. Eight, 38. You got it. Done. So. But that's so, going to be like lost. The numbers are bad. Yeah. I'm going to be at some hatch and then I'm going to, I'm going to not die, but the producers are going to say that I died to justify their stupid ending. You know what I mean? Like it'll be a whole thing. Oh, and there'll be a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. All right, let's go to another movie, The uh, Monuments Men. Yes. Yeah, so, um, let's didn't talk see about it. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed. I, I saw it. I saw The Monuments Men. I'm definitely like, I'll see anything George Clooney makes. I mm -hmm. want to go see it. Um, overall, good movie. Um, I think it. All good actors. It was really cool to see this collection of 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 people together. Um, I felt low at times, and this is the, all of the movies that George Clooney has directed. I can't say that every time he directs, it's just a, it's just amazing. It's not like, and I don't know if this is a fair comparison because he's done ten times the amount of work. But like Clint Eastwood, like I feel like everything Clint Eastwood does, like is very good, even when he misses the mark. And not that George Clooney, you know. He's a good director. I think there just there was times in this film where I felt like 
he was trying too hard to, or just, it felt like I was watching a World War II movie from like the 50s. You know what I mean? Like it just was felt. Was that the intention? Do you I think? believe that was his intention. I, I don't think it was a mistake. But I think it got in the way though. Okay. Because like, the, I kept getting distracted by the sound choices. Because there would be the music, there would be these kind of moments, and you know, they're in a war, and it's, it, there's some heavy moments in there, and he's directing the actors to kind of, Play it, you know, like you would. Hey, you're in a war zone, and then there'd be this like, bum, 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 like World War II music from the '50s, and I'd be like, it really took me out of it. Mm. And I think he like sh- suddenly you feel like there's a soundtrack, yeah, like exactly. Llewellyn Davis, yeah. like there's gonna be a exactly. What was the one? What was the one with the soundtrack that he did the that won tons of awards? Which one? George Clooney movie. Oh, uh, oh, brother, where art thou? Yes, mm-hmm. it, it, but that actually didn't get in the way because it, like, it was part of. Well, the, that was uh, part of the movie. Yeah, but if you movie, if yeah. you feel like there's going to be an oh, brother, where art thou? Like you're trying to win awards on your soundtrack. Uh, yeah, I don't know that. I, it's weird. I don't know if he was like, oh man, I want to make a great soundtrack. I think it was he, just intrusive. It's well, I like. think he went because he made the decision of I want this to seem like a, a 50s World War II movie. Therefore, we need this type of music. I think that. Is what got in the way. Right. Like okay. he should have. I think he could have pulled back a little bit on the let's make a 1950s World War II movie, make it kind of like that a little, mm. but then have more modern. Because like as as we've talked about on this show, um, you know, ever since Saving Private Ryan, you know, the battle sequence, the very beginning of that movie with the battle sequences, and all, you can't. It's hard to kind of go back now that that like war movies, specifically World War II movies, have now been depicted in a different light. You know that it isn't the like again that opening battle sequence in 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 Saving Private Ryan was like oh my god. Like I remember hearing about World War II vets watching that and like having a physical emotional reactions. So. When you and there, if, if you watch it, there's no music. There's no. We gotta charge up the hill. It's just like you are in an awful battle. So then, when you, I think I don't think you can go back. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I think this mo- movie had very, and this is this is the the thing I think he did well, a very kind of funny and charming moments because you had these old guys who aren't hardened soldiers and they're trying to so you, save it, art. What it sounds like is he was trying to make more of a caper film set in. World War Two. Yeah, it did have that feel. It did like have, an Ocean's Eleven did, or something. Yeah, exactly. Like an Ocean's <laughs> Eleven. It's just like he kind of needed to. <clears throat> it's getting mixed reviews all over the place. And I think I think it. You know, and someone said that they it it didn't get a release. The re- initial release date was not um, like they didn't do a limited release to try to get Oscar consideration in December, which I thought they did. But a fan turns out they didn't. Yeah, they didn't. Which maybe is why. Like, um, I feel like you need to take a stand, though. Did you like it? I did. There's parts of it that I liked, but I totally did. You love it? No. And any I, parts of it? <clears throat> I mean, At any point while you're watching it, were you like, "This is a great movie"? There's a scene with Bill Murray and uh, I believe Bob Balaban, where this German young German soldier kind of stumbles upon them, and they've all got their guns drawn. And Bill Murray is so great in that scene that I loved. Um, Would it be better if just that scene was on YouTube? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I'll say this. I think it's worth seeing in the sense that, you know, January and February are always not... Dumping grounds. They don't release a lot of good movies. Right. So I'm glad I saw it. It did go... it, It also... Here's the other thing, too. And um, my friend who I saw was said the same thing, which was it just got slow. There were times where you're like, guys, Save ra- the art. race against the clock. Hitler, mm-hmm. the war, you know, like right. move it along. And they're just like, well, we'll try to go here and try to go <laughs> there. And mostly so like, we'll find a monument or two. So it's like Nebraska. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit like that type of pacing where you're like, go for it. And the, and the hey, we're old guys. You know, we're all old, you know, like scholars in a war zone. Like they played that joke a couple too many times. Got it. Now it sounds like I'm saying I hated this film, which I'm not. I'm saying that um, if you go in, if you go in expecting like Oscar, like this, then you're going to be disappointed. If you go in just like I want two hours of a bunch of actors I like, 
entertaining. Right. Right. I like when George Clooney is paired with Steven Soderbergh. When they had that company together Mm -hmm. uh, before Smokehouse, uh, they made some amazingly compelling movies. Yeah. I I think... Yeah, I, I see why this movie is not getting any Oscar right. or anything or whatever. It just it's okay. It's sort of okay. like the, his football movie that he made and and uh, and the what was the political one? Um, like that was. Oh, I hated that movie. Yeah, yeah, uh, Ides of March, I think. Oh um, no, different movie. <laughs> <laughs> Night. What was the movies. movie? Night. Uh... Good night and good luck. Yeah. Oh, you hated that movie. Yeah, really? I hated it. Oh no, I, th- I thought that was okay. Although I, I thought Syriana was. A thousand times. But better. again, he directed Good Night. He directed Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, which I liked. He directed Good I Night, like that too. Good Luck, which which I liked. He directed Leatherheads, which kind of missed the mark, and Ides of March kind of missed the mark as well. Like, I mean, I'm glad he's direct. I mean, because he cares about what he's making. He's not like an asshole. But some of these, I don't know. His how's the Descendants? I, th- I love The Descendants. You did? Yeah, I actually, I think I, I liked it. I never saw it. I think I liked it more than kids. Graham. Uh, well, that's, I think that's one of the reasons I think I resonated a little more with me than because I, I have kids. But I thought he did a really good job. I thought the movie was really good. And, you know, Rob Hubel was really good. Rob Hubel was I really forgot good. he was in that movie. Um, but it was, I really liked it. <clears throat> did I ever tell you that um, a long time ago on this podcast, you reviewed this movie, you talked about this movie that was horrible and one night i was happened to be like in a hotel mm-hmm. watching whatever the movie was that was on there and it was that movie and it was the one with all with Ravolo was in it all these guys and they all commit suicide oh my god yeah that remember was a horrible movie yeah yeah i can't even and remember it just the, was the name of that like the worst movie ever yeah, yeah it and was. i had remembered you telling me about it you were like it was just God awful, yeah. and then they just mm-hmm. all die. Yeah, just yeah. everybody the, dies. The suicide and, pack in a beautiful scenery, right? At, uh, at um, um, and they just Big keep Star. doing more and more drugs, yeah. and then they all die. Yeah, every Thomas single one Jane, of them. Uh, Rob Lowe. Where it was all these stars out? in it. Uh, it's a couple years ago. Um, because I remember you. Te- of lying? No, no, no. no. Oh, I can't. As I sat through it, I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe how bad this movie I is. I melt with you. Yes, That's it. I melt with you. Yes. And I remember you talking about it, and then I was watching it, and I'm like, this movie's terrible. Yeah. This, and then I went, oh, this is the movie yeah. they were talking about. <laughs> just Sometimes yeah. you just see a movie that's just so bad. Well, you go, about- what? what? How? Well, yeah. How, How did, did that you- get made? Nobody at anywhere at any point went, hey. Uh, and that was, that was <laughs> right? the movie, too. That, like, you have- They're like, wait, so everybody dies? Yeah. Wait, my character, too? No, not one character lives through this. It was okay. unbelievable. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> Uh, on a horrible film. Oh, no, yeah, believe me, it's not, it's not, spo- it's not spoiling we're anything. I think you yeah. told us that when loop, you talked yeah. to, yeah. Yeah, it was gonna ruin it for, by, I, I was saving you by ruining the movie. Yeah. But, but it was the kind of movie too where you have all of, um, you basically, you have everything set up for you. So it takes a lot of effort to really ruin it. You've got, um, great actors. Right. In their 40s. Um, thinking about their lives and how every, they're going through midlife crises and they're in this beautiful location and how do they deal and cope with it? Right. Great setup. I'm yeah, on board. Yeah. And then, okay. Here's so, how they cope. Yeah. And here's, here's how it is. They decide <laughs> Boo. To, kill, to kill themselves. Yeah. That's, well, uh, well, I want to get into this because, you know, talking about, uh, George Clooney and, you know, the movies that we all have liked or disliked. Now, Gravity is a film that Chris and I both really liked and you were saying, you were mediocre. You were mediocre. Yeah, I walked out of there, and it had was so. I mean, I went and sat in the theater right after it came out, but people were already going crazy for it, and so I, I guess I went in with high hopes, and that's always a bad, a bad thing. But right from the get go, I was like, oh, come on, with the George Clooney being George Clooney, I didn't understand that choice at all. So it's already he's they're doing that like, uh, you know. The, the funny back and forth and they're like these, they're, they're the, the banter, the witty banter. And then he's going to die in space and he's, and they're like, do we still doing the witty banter? He's really, you're still going to just be that charming. You're still being, you're still George Clooneying it up in space. <laughs> you're about to die. Like you're not going to have one moment where you're like, fuck, I'm going to die. Yeah. No, none of that. Just like. Hey, see ya. So long. Yeah. So long, kid. You're going to do great. <laughs> what? 
And then I'm I, going and then, to that big lake, hell yeah. in the sky. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay, Super now I'm already. See you on the other I'm, side of the sun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and I was already, you know, kind of out. And then I felt like the the I felt like the whole thing with Sandra Bullock, like let's add something. Oh, she had a kid that died, like that died, so she has nothing really to. Li- I mean, I just felt like it was very tacked on. Mm-hmm. And then it felt very like, oh, let's just have one bad thing happen after another that aren't even necessarily related. It's just to keep the excitement going. Oh, and here's another thing that does, it's not working out. And here, oh no, every moment was like, oh no, not you too, control board of the rocket ship. Can one thing go right? Oh boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So at a certain point, I was doing the rolling my eyes like, oh, okay. And it was only a 90 See, minute film. Can't she catch a break? Yeah. <laughs> can't even say it was too long. You know, it was. Well, I know. And then, you know, the way it ended, I was just like, oh, okay. So what, what, what really got wrapped up there? So it's. You know what's funny is everything you just said I can see, but I bought every part of it. I was like, okay, I could see this stuff going wrong. I could see George Clooney being the cool guy, and I could see her uh, having some backstory, and uh, and I, I I liked the ending too. But I will say that I wasn't annoyed while I. It was more like after I left, you he started thinking about. Well, it. I was like, oh, I mean, okay, I was totally engaged. It was exci- yeah. It was. It, I never was bored. Right. But I expect a little more. Yeah. I wonder. <laughs> Fair enough. I wonder if now where when in the run did you see it? Right, right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. Yeah. Because I'm wondering, as you say that, just to play sort of devil's advocate, am I somebody? And I we saw it like opening weekend. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, who was was dazzled and mesmerized by? I love the three. I'm not a 3D fan, but I love the 3D in it, and I thought it was cool. I'm wondering if I got caught up in all of that and that's why i really liked it no i don't think so i think it was a yeah because you guys are boys yeah (laughs) i do think honest to god i think it was a boy movie that was trying to dress it up it was trying to give it there i feel like they were like okay sandra bullock needs something to play i read an article where she said it was her idea to give her a kid that died back home like she was i think probably going like there need do guys there needs to be a little something more to my story. Mm. You know, I think they were very caught up in like, but what about all the effects? We got the effects. And she's like, yeah, but I'm a character who needs to have something happening. So I think it was very, very visual, which men are very visual. And I think women need some more like psychological thing, gravitas to like hang our hat on. Right. To feel like we saw a movie. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Which movie was that? (laughs) The vampire wolf. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't like movies. Do you guys don't? Do you have you guys met me? Yeah. I don't like costumes. They That's need to right. take place yeah. like and, and in the last be, five years. Yeah, and it can't be. No one can really even have something over their clothes now at this no. point. It can't be like no an jackets. Suit. Yeah. No, that's really what it did. That's why you're yeah. in Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. right. Jackets. Why does it have so. to be so cold? Why do you have to add that? Yeah. It's like why that artifice? Right. Why can't it be Phoenix? <laughs> right. Like, well, let me ask you this: um, uh, of the best picture nominations, which mm-hmm. Do you think, you know, you've got American Hustle, Nebraska, Captain Phillips, Philomena, Dallas Buyers Club, 12 Years a Slave, Gravity, Wolf of Wall Street, and Her. Okay. Can we, I know you guys already talked about Her to death, so I will just say that, can I pick the loser? The one I hated the most was Her. I hate that movie. It's horrible. I don't get it. You know, I think this year I, I was, and I saw so many of them because I do get the screeners and I was expecting more from a lot of movies. There were littler movies that I think were better. Like? Fruitvale Station. That movie is... Didn't have the marketing it push didn't have the mar- it. I, I, it should be It should be getting all these nominations. That is a great movie. And that kid, Michael B. Jordan, is amazing. Oh, my God. He's he amazing. was so good. It's, and it was like a heartbreaking movie, but it was true story. so well acted. I like anything based on a true story. Mm-hmm. I'm such a girl. And they did that such way. a great job of... Oh, that's right. You like the Lifetime movies. Yeah, I love Lifetime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. No, but I mean, like, Fruitvale Station also uh-huh. did a great job of... They didn't portray this actual person either like they didn't say oh he's some gang thug who had it coming nor right. did they go he was the honor student who was gunned exactly. down exactly it was like no, he's just a guy he's a guy and he had 
been in trouble and he was yeah. trying to be straight now and he wasn't right. perfect. Right. And it was an awful situation and it, like right. all of it. He wasn't somebody who had already completely turned his life around and they got him so wrong. It right. was like, no, he was fucking up a little yeah, bit and he was. he was like, but, but they showed that it still, there's no excuse still no for excuse for it. it yeah. Was, it was such, it's such a great film. Like that movie. It was pretty devastating. And I also liked Enough Said. I like some movies that were smaller movies. I liked those a lot. And then I had bigger expectations. I liked Captain did, Phillips. Did you see The Spectacular Now? Uh, that was a coming of age movie. Well, wait, that was... Teenagers and... I'd be curious to know what you thought of that. Wait, which yeah. was the water park one? Oh, that was um, that was uh, Sam Rockwell movie. That was the um, loved that movie way way back. We we'll yeah, yeah. love yeah, yeah. the way way back. Did uh-huh. you guys see that one? Yeah, I so, did like it a lot. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, but, you haven't uh, seen it? Yeah, I Robert loved it. Yeah, Sam Rockwell loved it. Great in it. And but Allison, if Janney, you like that, you might like Spectacular Now. I need. Similar movies. Yeah, yeah, I need to see Spectacular Now. <laughs> Allison yeah. Janney was so good. Allison Janney. Here's how good Allison Janney was in the way way back. I when she first came on screen. I felt like, God, I got to get out of here. You right? Because I was like, and not because the movie was bad. She was so believable as that annoying type of, yes. like, oh, hey, I'll, the yeah. party's here. Deal with it. Get yeah. over it. And yeah. you're like, oh. Like, I was like, oh, God. Like, I, you, everybody knows that person. And you're just like, how do I avoid her? Like, right. How do I avoid her at every at every cost? I right. Need to avoid and her. then you could feel. I love that movie because you can feel every character. Yeah. Like, you could feel mm-hmm. her kid, her daughter. You're just like, oh, that's mm-hmm. your mom. Yeah, that's like, your, what's that like? That's yeah, your who's mom. Making fun of her son with a with a, a strange eye. Like I told you yeah. to wear your eye patch, honey. Yeah. It's because I love you. It's like, no, you're telling your son he's got an ugly eye. Yeah. Like, you know what? This is. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. So that was a great movie. So I have to see Spectacular now. Yes. Okay. And I loved Wolf of Wall Street. Okay. I, I know that's a polarizing movie. You know what? I want to talk about this movie because I finally had a chance to uh, see it. I wanted to catch up a little bit. Okay. And okay. I've heard so much on both sides about this movie. I've heard people that have hated it, people that have loved it, people that have said it's a comedy, people that said it's not a comedy, it's a drama. People have said that it's glorified, you know, this guy's life. And people have said, no way, it's, it doesn't glorify it at all. It's it's horrible. And I watched this movie going, oh, I, I wonder which side I'm going to fall on. when I went, And I went out with completely blank slate, um, uh, no expectations. And this is one of those rare cases where I'm watching this movie and I'm going, you know what? I could kind of see everyone's point. <laughs> like I could literally see, okay, the beginning of the movie, this is a satire. I could see it was a comet. And okay, now towards the middle, towards the end, okay, now the satire is gone. Now we're into Scorsese drama mode. And we're also, okay, this kind of glorifies what he was doing. Of course it was. And then this, oh no, this is horrible and he's a monster. So it literally went back and forth between all of these different um, tones and also like almost like themes and even lessons. Like what is Scorsese trying to show us and when is he trying to show it to us? Because it seemed to flip and change every once in a while and I think that was his intention. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm wondering too if his intention was Or wasn't, he's just getting old. Yeah, or he's just like kind of forgot what he shot in the first, uh, <laughs> the first act. Uh, I think the intention was, uh, what I got from this movie is that this wasn't necessarily an indictment of this guy, but an indictment of pretty much of how this can happen. That, and, yes, and I agree. And it's more of like the system where there was very little consequence to what he did, what, a couple years in prison and now mm-hmm. he's still making millions, mm-hmm. you know, as a uh, promotional, as a motivational speaker. But what I, what I found, um, this and movie I, is only helping that business. Yeah, that's not exactly. But I still, business, I did but, find it kind of satirical through the whole thing. See, I, felt, I did, I did I thought, fe- feel the tone. I, cause I'm very sensitive to that. And I saw it shift. I really saw it where it was a, uh, it's definitely satire was set up that way. The first couple scenes are hilarious. And like when yeah. he's talking to his buddies and they're like going to start their own company and stuff, it looked like almost like a Coen Brothers movie. And th- then it just kind of went back into Scorsese territory with uh, but Stephanie, when, corruption and mobs and all that you, stuff. You thought it, so did you feel like it was a comedy all the way through? I felt like it was very entertaining all the way through. So I felt like there was enough moments of comedy all the way through and it was engaging and it was a good drama. And the whole time I'm going, I can't believe this really happened. And Oh, based and, on a true story. Yes, based on a true mm, story. Period so, piece though. Uh it's not 80s. really. Well, for you 80s. you don't like every kind any, No, because I was born. Years, I was in high okay. school in so the eighties. I'm cool with, with the eighties. You're cool with the eighties. When we get yeah. before I was born, now I'm annoyed. Okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> 50s? So 70s, no, 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 thank you. Okay. 70s is good. No, I like 70s because I was, I'm 47. So I was, I was happening. 
things were happening. I was thinking okay. in the seventies. No, but I liked what you were saying, which is like, wow, I can't believe this could happen. Like right. this guy could get this rich. Mm-hmm. And also I think it's a fascinating look at the kind of mindset that's like, I'm just going to be, I'm going to create myself. Like I just found him to be a fascinating character. Then later when that one woman wrote an, wrote an open letter the, the to the guy. Yeah, the daughter of the guy that got screwed over yeah. by that guy. I thought that was so annoying that she did that. <laughs> just got swung. <laughs> right? So what a victim. Like, it's not his fault. That's so, why are you, I don't understand. Like, so you can't make a movie about somebody that's not a good guy? Like, then we can't make any, most movies. <laughs> like, we can only make movies about people that are good people? Right, but I think like I don't oh, think- we're all glorifying this guy. I don't think we're all glorifying the guy. He lost everything. I mean, he lost his business. He went to jail. I'm just saying, it's not like, it's not like nothing ever happened, and he's continuing to have this business. And we made a movie that's sure. completely glorifying it. Do you know what I'm? I, I I get the point of view from the letter of like, this movie did not show the carnage that he brought upon me and my mom and my family. Like, I, I, I get where that person's coming from. And also, if I... But he didn't get paid for the movie. Right. He got he gets paid from his motivational thing or whatever. And sure, does it help his brand? Of course it does. It does. Yes, it does. But that's kind of no, unavoidable. I don't think we should... Boy- movie. I don't know No, he doesn't get that. paid. People that are no, no, no. criminals based don't a, get... It was based on a book, though. Right, but he doesn't get paid oh, for the rights to the, to right, the right. story. That right. money has to go back to people that right, he does right. not get make a dollar. Mm-hmm. As far as I mean, as far as the law goes, he doesn't make money off the off the rights to the book. You can't make right. money if when you've committed a crime, you can't make money on the rights to that story. Right. We you gotta, can, we got to rethink our business. But model. you yeah. can make money all around it. Yeah. So I get the fact sure. that he's making money. And but I'm just saying, income. like, this is. But for her to be like, we need to boycott the movie. What? So I can't be entertained because the guy's a bad guy. That would mean there's a lot of movies that I shouldn't be able to see then. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That no one should watch anything. Right. Or listen to this show. Yes. Um, like, yeah, you can't, watch, can't watch Dracula. Nothing. You know. Right. He was not a good guy. He sucked people's blood. <laughs> what about the victims? What about people who got their blood sucked out? I know. Jeez. Yeah. What are they oh, it's so romantic. Letters? We're yeah. romanticizing. <laughs> like, oh, that's so sexy when you suck someone's blood. Oh, now I don't have a soul. Like, that's yeah. not sexy at all. No, that's people get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> What a wonderful public service you provided for us today. <laughs> Stop glorifying Dracula, you guys. Yeah. You think, it's, think the... it's all about a sexy cape. It's no, not, no, you guys. No, it's not. Hypnosis, please. <laughs> he turns into a bat. Bad yeah. hairy disease. Yeah. He's yeah. bad guy. He's bad That's, people. He, we, he shouldn't be making money off of that. Oh. <laughs> the Dracula Count Dracula. Family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing a letter. I yeah. want people to boycott that all the movies, all Dracula <laughs> movies, anything vampire related, because it glorifies it. It does. It does. They're bad people. <laughs> Thanks, God. wow. Thank you, Stephanie. God. Watch parental discretion, guys. Yeah. It's going to be this kind of like a life saving. There's a tip. lot of this. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go to um, uh, DVD. Yeah. Or no, we're going to talk about the uh, Kickstarter campaign real quick. Or do you want to do it at the end? We'll do it at the end. All right, we'll do it at the end. Let's do it now. Don't wait till the end, because what if people stop listening? What if something happens? We already, happens? About it? We already kind of talked about no, it. No, you guys need to talk well, about it. Get have, on their Kickstarter campaign. Uh, February 24th is the last day. Yeah. Ooh. And um, we still ha- need a few more donations to uh, get to our goal. And we would really... Does any amount great. help? Any amount helps. If five dollars or more, any amount helps. But we, if you could make it to twenty-five dollars, if every comedy film nerds fan could do a twenty-five dollar donation, we would pretty much be funded. Yeah. So, if everyone even just did like five, I'm gonna do it. If anyone did five or ten, we'd be pretty close. Close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, have please, you gotten a lot of donations we thus have. far? We've gotten a lot of donations. People have upped their donations. We've gotten a lot of support from people. The support so thus far has yeah. been really awesome. The, the but you have is, to make your long, goal. Or, or all you the get money nothing. gets yeah. And the yeah. problem is we've got a high goal because of travel. We're going to go and see the fans. And we want and, the movie done correctly. And we want the movie done correctly. I'm, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not interested in... People have asked me, well, I don't, you should have done a lower amount. I go, I did a documentary <laughs> where the budget was like 40, 50 grand. It took me three and a half years and it almost broke me. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm not doing that again. Okay. And you can, no then you have to wait way. for a, a, the editor when he has a free day to work on it. No and then way, it, It's not... We, we have and to, we have to it done it if it doesn't fund, we gave it our best shot. And we'll never We're, speak of it again. Yeah. 
<laughs> but uh, I mean, we're getting emails from like there was a guy in uh, Australia that works in an iron ore mine and listens to podcasts. And it was like, you know, you got what, once this documentary funds, you got to come and you know and film us out here and uh, in the ore that, mine. Yeah, yeah, in the ore mine. Yeah, he wants us to come out oh, to the ore mine, and but that's what we want to show. You're gonna need a little extra funding. For that insurance, that's the yeah. That's one of our stretch goals. That's a stretch but, goal. That's the is insurance do. seriously? Because uh, <laughs> I want to show. I want to see see a guy in some ore mine in Australia listening to whatever you know. I think it's Aisha us Tyler. and Profop. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Mm-hmm. This is the us and and Will Anderson show. Mm-hmm. Or like, I was in um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin last weekend, and uh, the Dave Hansen of the Wisconsin Hansen Brothers, who are big fans of the show, Dave and Ron. He he works for Line and Kugel Brewery and gave me a tour. Cool. And it was like, and he was showing me all how beer is made. And he's like, and I was asking him, how'd you get into podcasting? He's like, oh, I started listening because I used to have to work cleaning and just all this it's crazy amount of work that is done in that. And he goes, that's how I got into it. And he was telling me, uh, he goes, I feel like I know you guys because I listen to podcasts. And he goes, that's sort of always the weird thing is you walk up to a podcaster and you know so much about them and yet they don't know much about you at all. No. And that's one of the things we want to explore if it gets funded. Yes. I love doing a podcast. Yeah. I've, great. I've never made a dollar on For Crying Out Loud. I think a lot of people don't know that because I have no ownership of the show. Mm-hmm. It's on Adam's, Adam Corolla's digital network. So, but I just, it's amazing how people think, like you said, that they know you and how they get, I don't want, I don't want to say helped, but like, when you just talk about your life and then people, somehow cathartic for people to hear, you know, mm-hmm. the craziness that goes on in my life and Lynette's right. life. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, it seems to like affect people. It does. And I go, I can't just walk away from, even though I make no money, it's like people really like it. And there's something and that gives actually, you a little high about doing something that yeah, people actually no, no, enjoy no and are engaged with. There, there's and no it makes question. me feel really good. And especially like someone, you that's know, what the documentary is about, documentary. is that connection between the podcaster and right. the fans and how we both kind of need each other. But, you know, the interviews with the podcaster is only half the story. We have to talk to the fans because right. get the other half. You know, you obviously you work on a TV show that takes a lot of your time. You're an author and these are the things that pay your bills. But then you, uh, as you just kind of said, you know, as a as an entertainer, an artist, get something out of talking on that show, even though it doesn't pay you any money. Oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Well, and the thing is that I find the most interesting is that of everything that I do, the most vocal fans are the people that listen to the podcast. And mm-hmm. anytime I ask people that listen to my podcast to go do something, be it like go like the Facebook page for parental discretion, that's the people that do it. Right. The people that are watching my TV show are not people that Nickelodeon found. There are people that I, there are people that yeah. listen to my podcast go, Oh, well, we really like you on your podcast. We'll go support your show. It's why every it's network so weird. should be giving us TV shows because it's they like, should. we will bring loyal fans to your network. Yes. They're the most loyal fans. They're Ever. the people that follow you around and, and they're the people mm-hmm. that comment on my Facebook posts and they're the people that, yes. co- that comment on Twitter. Those are the people that are like engaged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Way those are engaged. the people that you're re, and you, the fact that you're reaching people like that just from, chatting is kind of amazing. Yeah, it is. Anywhere I love in it. the world. Anywhere yes. in the world. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anywhere in the like world. I'm sure you've gotten emails from all over the place. Like San Francisco. Yeah. 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 I mean, other, yeah. like the, the, the yeah. other side of California. Yeah. yeah. Like, what's, it's crazy. How, how, yeah. Yeah. Acres Fresno. Fields. Is there gravity there? I, I don't know. know. How do they eat? Like what kind of foods do they eat in San Francisco? <laughs> do you have to get shots to oh, go I, to I, Northern California? I don't know. Cause I'll probably never, I mean, it's one of my dreams to go there, <laughs> but I'll probably. This is Northern California. <laughs> <laughs> That was the dumbest bucket yeah. list. Ever. My goal: Sacramento. That's yeah. if I yeah. can make it there. Yeah, yeah. someday. Yeah. Oh, it's hard to find the time. Governor mm-hmm. Mansion. I mean, that's a lot of work. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Indeed. Um, all right. Let's talk Our about capital. DVDs. DVDs. Ender's Game. I mean, come on. What? Uh, Neil was not impressed with this movie. There's a review on the site, and if he was Neil actually doesn't like a film. You know you shouldn't see it. Yes, agreed. And uh, also, he um, was a fan of the uh, short story that was based on too. Right. So, The Counselor. This is the movie that I was regrettably right about. Uh, you were excited to see it, and I was like, I don't know, this may not be that good. Who's in that one? Um, a lot of people are in that movie. A lot of people. The Counselor. What's is... it about? Uh, 
Uh, it was like it a was lawyer? A, a thriller, right? It's Ridley Scott, a British guy? the writer was Cormac McCarthy, Michael Fassbender. It was his first screenplay. It. Yeah, Penelope Cruz, Cameron Diaz. Like Cormac McCarthy, his books are amazing. Yeah, he's a brilliant novelist, but this is his first screenplay. His first so. screenplay, oh. and it was just all over the map. It was like, if you look, again, like I was one of the people that got mesmerized by the trailer and went, ah, oh, this is going to be great, and it's it's not. It's it's all these actors I like, but it, it really, it's no good. Don't see it. Yeah. Uh, the other one you can miss is All is Lost. Um, oh, the uh, Oh, my gosh. This was so bad, this movie. Is, I guess you could watch these films just sort of... While you're folding laundry or something, but, and you won't miss anything. But it's sort of a research project. Yeah. Like, oh, this is how horrible... This how can is you what? do a Lost at Sea movie uh, incorrectly? And it's like, after we had Life of Pi, there's, there was no reason for this movie to get made. And this ma- made it even all the more entertaining. I started reading some of the other reviews, and the biggest complaint is that... Um, Anyone who involved in this movie apparently knows nothing about sailing. Like everything that right. Robert Redford does is uh, completely wrong for an actual sailor to do. You do you need that though? Yeah. In a movie that all takes place on a boat. Yeah, no, you don't need any realism or you know or or, uh, or what an actual sailor would do in case the hull of his boat was breached and then uh, the guy who's been the character has been sailing his whole life. Yes, so he yeah. knows everything. And uh, apparently, fresh water not a big concern with him uh, loading up the raft and stuff. Good. Like things yeah. like that. It was right. really. You can just drink seawater, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's right? fine. You just heat it up. There's the water no everywhere problem. around you. Yeah, you yeah. just drink that. Mm-hmm. Drink it. What's your problem? Yeah. <laughs> so it's really it's it's one of those movies that really it 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 went nowhere and it was like kind of like oh this is going to be an amazing you know tour de force with uh, Robert Redford and his performance and there's no dialogue and it's only a thirty page script and blah blah blah. You know what the script needed? More pages. That's really yeah. what it needed. <laughs> that was your problem. Or a tiger. One of those things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then our uh, our friend Joseph uh, Levy's movie, Spinning Plates, is coming out. So definitely check that out on DVD. It's amazing if you haven't checked it out. In fact, we actually got a bunch of emails when we had Joseph on here about how they weren't sure what they were going to see that weekend, but after our podcast, they went to see Spinning Plates, and they thought it was amazing. It's a really cool documentary about being in the restaurant business, and uh, it's it's if you like documentaries... I, think, I do. Yeah, you'll love this. This one's a really good one. And again, it does that thing that, that a good documentary does, which is it brings you... like uh, I'm not a foodie, so I don't yeah. care about that, but I was totally engaged and intrigued by this film and what these restaurants... These, Diff- completely different restaurant owners from different backgrounds have to go through. And it's all really about how food connects all of us. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's not really about the restaurants mm-hmm. as much as that personal human connection. So it's a really, it's a good doc. Yeah, check it out. Okay, I will. Um, we'll and premiering this. Is it week, on Netflix or just DVD? It will be on Netflix. Yeah. I'm okay. not sure if it's on yet, but okay. it, w- it definitely will be. Um, premiering this week. Uh, RoboCop. Finally, how long we were going to have to re- wait for a remake of RoboCop? Wow. I, I don't know. I And one that completely misses the point of the original I movie. Know. The trailer just looks... You know, Robocop, when that came out, it was a satire. It wasn't meant to be taken seriously. It had commentary and satire, the um, ridiculous over-the-top violence. And then this movie really looks like, no, we're going to take it seriously. There's a robot cop, and he's going to kill criminals. My My feeling on watching this trailer is every when they went, you know, we need to make a Robocop for this this generation. Okay, great. Our generation. Okay. Yeah. So we need to update some of the stuff and the technology. And then they made every bad choice. Like, they were going to update it in every incorrect way. Is right. what I feel like this movie is going Right. To. You know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of cool... I mean, I mean, Robocop and uh, Terminator have had, like, another second life in comic books. And they've actually... There's been some crossover stuff. There was a great story written by Frank Miller of a Robocop versus Terminator. And that would make an amazing... Movie. Well, already, you read the description. In, two th- in 2028 Detroit, right there you're making a mistake. 14 years in the future. The original RoboCop was that, like, five years in the future. You know what I mean? That, like, it, we're almost there. Right. Like, just look over the horizon a little bit. This is where we're going to be. Right. And, and all of that, like, Detroit was, I mean, the movie was, was very sort of uh, on the nose in terms, the original one, in terms of, you know, Detroit was running out of money. You know, has that happened? <laughs> you know, like, right. and they, this is where they had to do it. And a big corporation, you know, a big weapons dealer came in with this. Like, and I know they're going to probably try to sprinkle that in. I just watching the trailer, I feel like you're going to sprinkle it in like incorrectly. Like they're going to just use the well, wrong spices. Well, Neil, we'll, we'll know what Neil thinks very shortly. Uh, Neil will have a review up All on right. the site this weekend. Okay. 
Uh, Winter's Tale, this is the... Um... See, here, I'm going to tell you this real quick. Okay. On IMDb, it says, people who liked RoboCop also liked Two Guns with uh, Denzel Washington and Mark Wahlberg. Because he, and a, he and because he carries two guns, right? So That's this why. is telling you, right? This is the through. This is the oh, if you like this dumb, bad movie, <laughs> you'll like this other stupid one. Like if you hate right. plot and character development yeah. and logic, then yeah. here's some more. Yeah. yeah. If you like Transformers, you like. Living your life with blinders on. <laughs> yeah, not even. That's yeah. a, that's an insult to blinders. <laughs> what about this adult world, though? This looks okay. Interesting. Um, well, first, Winter's Tale is the. Um, oh, sorry, the Colin. Um, I think it's Colin Farrell. It's the reincarnation movie, and it looks like you are going to hate this movie because um, it has a few costumes in it, oh, no. and it's not only a period piece, but it has multiple periods in one. Peace. Oh, so, I don't like any time traveling. There either. may even be a bicycle in it. Oh, so, no. um, <laughs> this movie, why? Uh, it, it, it's released obviously uh, on today, which is Valentine's Day. So it's definitely just like a you know, it's that movie where they you just feel like a studio's in a boardroom going, "We need a Valentine's date movie. Like yeah. make it happen." Well, I have a one where a guy dies and recreate and falls in love with a book. It like they yeah. just like, right, done. right. And the next movie is Adult World, and this is an indie movie that actually looks kind of good. It's a Amy, a na- uh, naive college graduate who believes she's destined to be a great poet, but grudgingly accepts a job at a sex shop while she pursues a mentorship with reclusive writer Rat Billings. And that's actually um, um, John Cusack plays the reclusive uh, poet, and he was pretty funny in the trailer. So I'm actually looking forward to this movie. I think it, I think it could be funny. Why does she have to work at a sex shop, though? That's the why only can't job she, work she could at, get. Why can't she work at, like, a magic shop? Well, the, the, the town only has one of each, and no, the magic shop wasn't oh. hiring. Oh, was, <laughs> Crystal's Got it. Much about yeah. this. Well, Emma Roberts is the, the, is the lead in this, so it looks oh, interesting. Okay. I'll check yeah. it out. And I like me and Johnny Cusack. We went to the same high school. So, oh, wild right. kids for life. <laughs> Do you guys want to use high? John Hughes high, yes. Do you guys want to mention that Julia Roberts' sister died? What? Look at you, late breaking wow. news. Yeah, yes. she died happen? of. A, okay, so she has this. It's her half sister, but her same mom. So, do you remember a little while ago? It was like on TMZ and stuff. This girl was was a uh, complaining about Julia record, Roberts and saying she's not America's sweetheart. She's a bitch. No, but for the record, we don't watch TMZ. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, ahead, it was going. on the the, the go- other gossip sites, too. <laughs> so she was complaining about Julia Roberts, to which I remember replying to somebody on Twitter, like, okay, so Julia Roberts got her a job. She was a production assistant on Glee. And she was just constantly talking about how people don't know the real Julia Roberts, and she's, she's a bitch and not nice. And she made fun of her when she was a kid for... This is the sister who died uh-huh. was saying that Julia Roberts made fun of me when I was younger for be- and told me that I was overweight. Okay. But which I just thought was weird because but did she also got you a job, right? Like your job that you have right now, Julia Roberts got you because she's Julia Roberts. So anyway, but apparently she just died of a drug overdose. Oh. Just thought you might. It's wow. kind of film related. Yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Julia Roberts is in the films. <laughs> yeah, it's her third. I'm reading online. It said there were apparently three pages of rantings that her sister drove her to do this. Oh um, my god! Wow, that's awful. Well, that's the way we should end the show. Then. Yeah, that's uh... kind of light. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, instead yeah. <laughs> of a fun, she did it in a bathtub. Um. So, do you have any other deaths you want to bring up at the end of the show? <laughs> any, other, uh, any other stuff you want to just Shirley Temple died. I mean, Let's she talk about did. that now, too. But didn't you already think she died? I mean, did you? Didn't you? I was unaware she was still living. That's what yes. I'm saying. Did she leave a note blaming. Uh, did you blaming so Julia she Roberts? Blame Julia Roberts. <laughs> See, everyone blames Julia, Julia Roberts. Roberts. Turned me into a child's <laughs> drink. Like, <laughs> I've blamed Julia Roberts. Kristen. Why is your fax machine ringing? Yeah, because oh my god, that. Well, 1997. someone's calling from 1997. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I don't like time travel <laughs> stuff. Colin Farrell is uh, faxing you yeah. a script. It's like a, <laughs> you reincarnate that review. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so I think we're done. I think yeah. yeah. In, in, in many senses of the Just term, edit the word. that out. Yeah. No, yeah. Just we don't edit, edit it out. It stays no, in. no, oh, we don't man. know how. We don't know how to edit. <laughs> We don't know how to do it. But uh, I remember our last show. There was something that some dark tangent we got on that 
you were like, I'm going to have to edit that out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder if we did, actually. We, I, mean, I don't I, think you did. In no. 200 probably. some episodes, we probably edited maybe 10 of them. Like, we rarely. Very few. Very we few. Rarely, we don't it's yeah. like when sometimes. Only the like, ones I'm on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, get oh, on no. my editing oh, fingers. No. <laughs> <laughs> there have been a few where, like, box. there have been a few after the guests leave, and then Graham and I just look at each other, and we say almost at the same time, yeah. we have to edit that yeah. part out. <laughs> it's usually, like, a joke that was made. That maybe is like way too dark or offend. We're just, cause we both can kind of picture the emails we're gonna get. And right. The one time we, and I won't ne- mention, but a couple times where we forgot to edit or bring it up, and then somebody emailed like, man, how can you guys, I can't believe you let the guest say that or whatever. But we're not editing this one. No, I think we're okay. Yeah, All right. We're good. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Shirley Temple. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to just move on. All right, that's our show. Uh, thank you, Stephanie Wilder Taylor. Where can people find you online? Thank you, guys. Well, they can find you yeah. on the computer looking at our Kickstarter campaign. Yes, right? yes. Or you can go to stephaniewildertaylor.com. Mm-hmm. That's my blog. Mm-hmm. Stephanie with an F. Or you go to my Facebook, you know? Friend me on Facebook. Bang, bang. What's stopping you? Yeah, nothing. Don't be dicks. So no. uh, now the next the season has already started, right? Yes. Tune discussion. in on Friday night at 10 p.m. Or just mm. set your DVR so it seems like you're watching. Nice. Why not? And the show's mm. called? Parental Discretion Yay. with Stephanie Wilder-Taylor. Or you can also just go to what website if they just want to watch episodes that way? NickMom.com. Okay. Dot com. Excellent. Yeah. And also, guys, we have... Uh, Several of Stephanie's books in the comedy show. Sure do. do. Signed. Yeah. So check those out. Signed, sealed, mm-hmm. delivered. They're yeah. yours. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a more lighthearted ending. That is. That is. People die every day. <laughs> Stephanie Wilder Taylor. <laughs> I'm not overdosing. <laughs> Life is sweet sorrow. I'm yours. What? Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Go to my website, blamejuliaroberts.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, which is a Squarespace website. It is. Oh, yes, it is. It's a great website. Yes, I'm starting it after use, I get home. Use coupon code CFN and uh, start the other website, which is uh, Australian Iron Ore Mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dot com. Dot com. I think it's dot gov. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, that's our show. Uh, I will be performing um, February 19th at the Irvine Improv um, doing the... Surfari, which is a, a, a show that Murray Villariano put together. It's a bunch of comedians who are also surfers, so that's February 19th. Wow. Excellent. And we also just want to uh, um, mention that February 24th is the last day for the last Kickstarter, Kickstarter, so please uh, help us out with this one. I'll put it on my Facebook again. Oh, that Yay. would be awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is our program. My name is Graham Elwood. I'm Chris Mancini, and as always, remember... Han, Han shot, shot Julia Roberts first. <laughs> Kickstarter.